fierce, intense, combative. He was a three-time NHL All-Star, two-time Jennings Trophy winner, and a three-time Stanley Cup champion. He's ranked fourth all-time in win percentage, eighth in playoff wins, and fourth in playoff shutouts. A true competitor, he's found himself reduced to a backup on numerous occasions only to bounce back each time, flourishing as a starter once again. A goalie who didn't take any BS from anyone, who excelled at preventing goals as well as scoring them. Standing at 5 foot 10, 178 pounds, he's Ozzy, the Wizard of Oz, number 30, Chris Osgood. Christopher John Osgood was born on November 26, 1972 in Peace River, Alberta, Canada. From a young age, he was obsessed with hockey, watching his Edmonton Oilers on TV and playing hockey in his basement during the intermissions. Osgood aspired to be a goalie, and even though he wasn't the largest kid, his intensity and compete level was much larger than the others. As he recalls, he would get so angry after a bad game that he wouldn't be able to sleep until 5 in the morning. And it was this unrelenting stubbornness that would form the Chris Osgood who would go on to backstop one of the most successful franchises in NHL history. Osgood was a talented hockey player, but he also excelled in music. As a drummer, he would hone his ability to focus, as well as practice how to find calmness in extreme conditions, skills that translate well into hockey. He eventually formed a band with his friends, but a chance to play in the NHL was too good to give up, as he ultimately chose to stick with hockey. Osgood spent three years with the Medicine Hat Tigers of the Western Hockey League, leading the team to winning records and heading into the 1991 NHL Entry Draft he would be selected in the third round, 54th overall, by the Detroit Red Wings. Osgood would spend a year in the minors before making his debut as a goalie in 1993. Heading into the season as the Red Wings' fourth string goalie, he would outplay the veterans as he finished the regular season with 23 wins, 8 losses, and 5 ties. More importantly, Osgood had established himself as a bona fide number one goalie. He was competitive always battling to stop the puck and the opposition. He was focused, capable of denying grade A opportunities even after a long period of doing absolutely nothing. He was clutch as he came alive especially during the playoffs, but perhaps most remarkably, he never gave up on any play. Down and out, no problem. Gaping net, no problem. You could always count on him to give it his all. Chris Osgood never got rattled. It didn't matter how many goals he's given up, he understood that all that matters is the next save. Heading into the 1994 playoffs, Osgood had become the undisputed starter, and the Red Wings, who had finished in first place in the Western Conference, were heavy favorites against the lowly San Jose Sharks, who had made the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. The series went to a Game 7, and with the score tied at 2 in the third period, Osgood coughed up the puck to gift the Sharks the goal and the series, and no one was as devastated as Chris Osgood. During the offseason, the Red Wings decided they couldn't rely on the sophomore goalie who was the culprit of their early playoff exit, so they went out to acquire a veteran who's won it before, Mike Vernon. The idea was for Vernon to take Osgood under his wing, and for the next few seasons, that's exactly what happened as Osgood continued the battle to hopefully one day reclaim his rightful place as the starting goalie. It is now 1997, and Osgood had retaken the starting position in the regular season, but heading into the playoffs, the Red Wings went with Vernon for his experience, and Osgood had to sit once again. He watched on as the Detroit Red Wings won the Stanley Cup that year, and even though his performances that season were enough for his name to be engraved on the cup, he knew he still had much to prove. If he were to win the Holy Grail, he needed to earn every bit of it. In the following offseason, Vernon was traded and Osgood had become the starter he so very much desired to be. And even as he continued to register sensational numbers, fans were still unconvinced. Could he truly fill Vernon's shoes? Well, the opportunity came near the end of the season against the Colorado Avalanche. Just the previous year, the rivalry had reached a tipping point, and
and Vernon had squared off against Patrick Waugh. If there was ever a platform for Osgood to announce his commitment, this was it, and he would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Avalanche netminder despite the considerable size mismatch. This fight proved not only to himself and his teammates, but also the rest of the hockey world that he was ready to lead his team. Heading into the 1998 playoffs, Osgood had finally returned as the starter, as he sought to finally exercise his demons from the costly mistake four years ago. And his solid clutch play was enough for the Red Wings to repeat as Stanley Cup champions, but this time, he knew he deserved it. However, some fans remained unconvinced as they believed the Cup was won because of the stacked team, that it had nothing to do with Chris Osgood. It didn't help that his next few seasons were less dominant, coinciding with early playoff exits leading to the waning support from even more fans. In the year 2001, with the emergence of Manny Legacy and the acquisition of Dominic Hasek, Osgood would be put on waivers and he would be picked up by the New York Islanders. Things seemed pretty dire for Ozzy, as it appeared his career was on the balance. Banished from the dynasty of a team such as the Detroit Red Wings, to an Islanders team that finished dead last in the standings, what would you do? Chris Osgood did what he was born to do, continue fighting until the very end. And in his very first season on the island, he led his team into the playoffs, finishing second in the division as the team saw a 44-point improvement from the year before. After a Game 7 first round exit that year, coupled with the fact Hasek had led the Red Wings to the Stanley Cup, it had reinforced that Ozzy couldn't win without an all-star team in front of him. The year is now 2003, and the Islanders had invested heavily in Rick DiPietro. Osgood was cast away once again as he was traded to the St. Louis Blues, where he would become the starter for two early playoff exits. The Blues chose not to renew his contract and Ozzy had become a free agent. Unwanted. Discarded. It really seemed like it was lights out for Osgood this time, but he still had fight in him and he would spend a year working on his playstyle, redefining himself from a stand-up goalie to a modern butterfly goalie and his sacrifice would not be in vain. In 2005, Osgood signed a one-year contract for pretty much league minimum as he was set to be the backup to Manny Legacy. Legacy ended up underperforming and he was shipped out shortly after. And just when it looked as if Ozzy was back as the starter, the Red Wings acquired Hashik for a second time and Ozzy was relegated to the bench yet again. The year is now 2008, and Osgood had clawed his way back to his starter, well, sort of. Him and Hasek had been splitting games all season long and the playoffs were about to start. Who will start Game 1 of the opening series? Even though the two netminders had near identical numbers in the regular season, coach Mike Babcock turned to Hasek as Osgood was cast aside once again. As fate would have it, Hasek would struggle out of the gates and Osgood would come in relief, rescuing his team from the depths of hell. He would not surrender the crease again. Osgood would make save after save, some of them miraculously, as the Red Wings ended up winning the Stanley Cup that year. Even though Henrik Zetterberg would win the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoff MVP, fans argue to this day that it should have gone to Osgood. In the following year, Osgood would lead the Red Wings to another Stanley Cup Finals appearance, but ended up losing in Game 7. Some fans truly believe that if the Red Wings had won the Cup that year, Osgood would have been a lock to win the Consmite Trophy. The following season saw him reduced to a backup once again, this time to Tim Howard, as Osgood had finally reached the twilight of his career. He announced his retirement in 2011, and he would later become a studio analyst for the Red Wings as well as a color commentator for Fox Sports Detroit. Chris Osgood was a goalie who was undervalued, underappreciated, and underrated. Time and time again, he would give his all for his team, perform well, and ultimately cast aside. All he did was win a couple of Stanley Cups early in his career, and even then, he would have to prove himself over and over, and it speaks to his determination and willingness to never give up, culminating in a third Stanley Cup win. He was within an eyelash of two Conn Smythe trophies, and if he had won either of them, he'd be a guarantee for induction into the Hockey Hall of Fame. 
In a career that coincided with the dominance of Dominic Hasek, Patrick Waugh, and Martin Brodeur, surely we can't fault Osgood for not being able to win a Vesna Trophy as the top goalie in a season. Just like any goalie, Osgood was not immune to bad games or bad goals. But what set him apart from other goalies was his ability to forget. Always focusing on the next save, it didn't matter if the game was scoreless or tied at four. Osgood made the saves when it counted as he propelled his teams to 401 wins in the regular season and 74 in the playoffs. Some might say he's nothing special, that he played behind the best teams in history, but where some have failed in such a role, he prospered with resounding success. Even Vernon and Hasek only won a cup each as a starter in Detroit, despite playing there for multiple seasons. And Osgood was special enough to win two as a starter. Chris Osgood deserves to be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's it for now, thanks for watching. If you're currently not subscribed, you know what to do. And if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting the channel by liking, sharing, and commenting. See you soon.